you and Dan were just smack dab in the path of Snowpocalypse 2016. Yeah, Jersey got hit pretty hard. Um, I'm pretty sure when the mailman came around today, like I didn't get a good look at him, but I think he's a White Walker. Um, yeah, it, uh, it's pretty, like, I don't think we're opening either of our doors until spring. I don't know if you can see my back door there, but there's about three feet of snow. Oh, please. No, no, get up and go and open the back door so we can all see. Okay. I'm wearing, like, pink pajama pants, so I apologize for that. But... Oh! Live weather! Oh, I should unlock it, huh? The thing is... <laughs> Outward. <laughs> Not gonna open. You ain't going nowhere. Luckily, we mainly come in and out through the garage, which has an automatic opener, because the front door and back door are not opening anytime soon. Where are you going? Nowhere. Yeah. I and actually, Miracle actually got kind of sick of us. Like, oh God, I'm just looking at the shot of me in like my fucking pink pajama pants. And oh. Sorry, everybody. Very glamorous. Um, Miracle, we've been we've been home for like, and I had a few days off work before this weekend, so I've been home nonstop for like five days, and Dan's been home for like three days, and the cat's just fucking sick of us. Like, she was hiding inside the futon today and just like no nobody bother me fuck you guys you guys are supposed to go away yeah so uh we went i went out to work today and dan left her alone all afternoon and she's much happier now i think she was just over it with us could, could you imagine <laughs> no. though the no game more. could you imagine game of thrones in jersey the fucking white walkers yo get out of here get out of here with this shit that what's wrong with you crazy parts of watching the storm coverage whenever there's a blizzard we love to watch cnn because they're like breaking news still snowing um but he loved watching like governor christie and mayor de blasio and governor cuomo and like all the new york government guidos <laughs> be like look we need you to stay off the roads there is no reason for you to be on the road stay at home like you know all the big all the big guidos given the press conferences was very amusing to him. Well, here's a uh, Grady update. Come on, buddy. You wanna come on? Come on. It's okay. It's okay. Here's a Grady update. I do not have Miracle. She went Aww. to bed with Dan. Aw. So Grady's Grady's holding down the cat duties tonight. Poor buddy. Baby. He got fixed on Friday. Which I'm sure you have a fever, baby. Getting fixed went okay. But the problem, uh, you want to go down now? Well, he's not squealing about it, but the problem is uh, he, the getting the neutering went fine. Oh. <laughs> he's like, get the fuck away. Um, the neutering went fine, and the incision has no infection. He's perfectly okay there, but he's running a fever. We're not entirely sure why. I took him to the vet this morning. They gave him an antibiotic injection, which I'm just... to. Everyone at home, this is the sequence of events that happened for Grady this morning. He woke up. He was stuffed in a box. He was taken out into a very cold day. Pulled from his box, put on a metal table by a strange man who then proceeded to stick something up his butt and then give him an injection. He's had a rough day. This, that was pretty much the worst day of his life. He has no context for any of what happened at all. This cat, I'm pretty sure cats think going to the vet is an alien abduction. Yes, Miracle at the vet, last time we had to wait a long time because it was a busy day. So we sat in the room and she just sat there howling bloody murder for an hour before anybody came in. Like, I let her out of the carrier to walk around. And I think Miracle really, really hates dogs. And I think she smelled dogs and just got angry. But every time, like, there was a window on the door to the room, so every time someone walked by, she would howl at them, like, help me! <laughs> I'm like, nobody's even come in here yet. You're literally just sitting in a room. Like, nothing bad has happened to you. Well. And they don't even usually take her temperature, because we're usually there because she's full of snot all in her head. Oh. So they just clean her ears and 
get sneezed on and give us medicine. Well, speaking of the foul weather, we do, of course, have some stories regarding that. Oh, yes, we do. Sure. I watched some fucking hipster doing headstands in a snowdrift on CNN. Let's get to it, shall we? Let's do it. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out worldwide, interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? You know what we haven't had in a long time? I'm crazy for uh, sanity? That too. But what we haven't had in a good long time is an old-fashioned snow dickin. We haven't had that in a long time. Well, Sweden, which was a little bit out of the way, but still got a considerable amount of snow. Sweden, so it pretty much snows there in July, right? Yeah. Sweden had a bit of a snow. This was what happened. So, someone drew a big dick. Let's see if I can get the, the picture up here on the screen. Someone drew a great big dick. In the, uh, in, in, on this, I can't really see it very well. That's not good. Someone Am I drew, supposed to see something in this picture? Scroll down. Oh, Yeah, okay. there, there, there's a dick. It's like, spot the dick in this picture. Where's penis? Um, so there was a giant dick that was put in this frozen lake. And people were started complaining to the, uh, to, the police and were like, can you make the dick go away? <laughs> and the cops... You know, women have been asking that <laughs> since time immemorial. And the cops, of course, they did in fact respond to this. And these poor bastards had to go out in the fucking freezing weather and clear the dick off the oh, ice. God. But wait! It gets better. It probably would have snowed over it eventually anyway. <laughs> well, you say that because after the one dick was removed, <laughs> someone came back and drew an even bigger one. <laughs> this is, I think you can see this one from space. <laughs> Dan, I had to stop Dan from doing obscene no sculpture on our front lawn. He sent me a picture of somebody who had made a snow sculpture of two people doing naughty things. And he was like, I should do this on our lawn. And I'm like, no, we're renters. We don't own this place. Oh, come on. You've read Calvin and Hobbes. Yes. Come on. Everyone wants to do that. Yes. But we're renters. We can get kicked out. Jed the Jedi in the channel says, cut off one dick, two more shall take its place. <laughs> so what happened was someone was, they, they actually went out, they smashed the, the original dick, the tiny dick. So someone came back. And then it swelled. <laughs> you would think the cold weather would make it smaller. <laughs> Well, yeah, but when you start smashing it, it's gonna smell. It's not. It's gonna swell. Not. Oh, this is. I mean, god damn. I know it's. It, there's not a whole lot going on in Sweden, but really, this is this is the height of your entertainment, people. Nothing else to do. You would do it. No, because I don't like being out in the cold for extended periods of time. Well, all right, but I'm a wuss. I, I would pay. I would pay someone else to do it. Right. You know, I would. I would contribute to the dick. Exactly. So you don't get to judge. You know, I would like NPR that shit. I would be <laughs> like, you know, together, you and others like you can join together to make a giant dick in the snow, and you know, I would be all about that. Is that something you need to crowdfund? I mean, snow is free. The thing that weirded me out was I was seeing a lot of recipes, snow recipes. And I'm like, dude. Don't do that. Don't eat that. Don't. You don't know where that's been. 
Yeah. Look, our, our ecosystem works like this. Water evaporates, goes up into the sky, picks up all sorts of crazy shit that's up there. It comes back down and it filters through the aquifer and then it's okay again. The snow has not gone through the aquifer step. You don't know what the dick is there. Well, they all say the exact opposite of that. Everyone was saying, make sure to eat the snow when it's freshly fallen. Because then it's the safest when it hasn't had the chance to get stepped on and peed in by dogs and all of that happy horse shit. I just think, just go get... Uh, just, do, do, you know what? You've got a freezer. Although, I mean, in certain parts of Michigan, that's probably the cleanest water they've seen in a couple of years. Yeah! It's, it's, uh, By all means, uh -huh. please eat the snow. It's probably your safest option. Uh -huh. Well, we have we second rule. I don't know if I don't know if it's five seconds. That you'd have to be pretty quick. We have some more cold weather shenanigans. Um, have you had to fly during the cold weather or gotten stuck on the fucking runway? Due to cold I've never weather. gotten stuck. I've been lucky that I've never gotten stuck. We are going to Missouri next month, but we're driving so that we can bring Miracle to see her first mommy. So we don't have to fly in the winter, which is nice. Allison, when I when I had to cancel the show a few weeks back to go grab Allison from the airport. Oh, that's right. She was stuck on the runway because it, it was snow and they were. But, you know, it's they have a procedure about this sort of stuff. Yeah. They, they know what, what are those things, you know, you, you tell the passengers, we'll be done soon, please wait, we're sorry for the inconvenience. One of the things you don't tell the passengers is, we're not taking off because we don't want to die. Oh. I mean, points for honesty. <laughs> Ryanair passengers asking why their flight was delayed for eight hours were stunned when a crew member explained, we don't want to die. Raise your hands if you're surprised that this is Ryanair. <laughs> Ryanair. Shittiest airline. Ryanair is sort of like a subway a subway in the sky, essentially. Right. Like, weren't they charging standing room tickets for a while? Yeah. Charging people to use the bathroom? Like, it's fucking Ryanair. <laughs> the bizarrely honest announcement was made over the intercom as the Dublin bound flight was stranded on the runway at Glasgow. One flyer, Ella Ryan, was so shocked by the explanation she posted a video of it to social media, which has been yanked the fuck down. I would play it for you because I would love to, but it's gone now. In the clip, a female crew member tells passengers, the captain cannot take off we have ice on the wings. We don't want to die. I mean, that's fair. I actually would appreciate that. Honesty. Well, me. The thing I never understand is why, if you're delayed for that long, why do you have to sit on the fucking plane? Why can't they let you off the plane? Yeah. So well, you can go get some shitty airport food and not be on a plane. Well, you see, it would be too much trouble for us to get to onboard everybody and put everybody back on. It would take so long. Just fuck you! It's eight hours! Let us right. off the fucking plane! You should not be forcing a hundred people to sit in a giant metal tube for eight hours. That's Smelling each other. Process like the flight to Ireland is about six hours, but you're moving that time. Yeah, smelling each other, infecting each other, just listening to the kids scream. Yeah, I, I, it's it's, but there are okay. Points for honesty, sure. But have you ever known a white knuckle flyer? I am a white knuckle flyer. I hate flying. Okay. When you're on that fucking plane, you don't want to hear the words die, death, no, fire, oh God, brace yourself. There's policy for for reasons. Because, you know, even when I was first flying, it made me, hell, even today sometimes when the plane's a little <laughs> jiggly, it still makes me a little leery. I don't want to be reminded that at any moment... The tiny metal can that we have launched into the stratosphere, stratosphere could at some point decide, hey, I like the ground better. Yeah. I wonder if it'll be friends with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I exactly. do not enjoy flying at all. And I am white knuckling it until we are safely in the air. 
And even then I'm a bit nervous the whole time until we're back on the ground. I don't like not being on the ground. Don't 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 tell people we're oh oh wait, we, we have there there's actually oh some apparently someone has made a copy. Let's see if if, if we can play this. No guarantees, but well, you know what? Why not? I, I just just to see what the fuck happened here. Cause of course it's YouTube and there are redundancies like crazy. Yeah. How many copies are there of that creepy cryptic guy in a plague mask world ending video by now a lot you're, you're still hung up on that one it's fucking creepy man have you watched it <sighs> that was months ago all right let's let, let's 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 listen very closely i'm going to turn the volume up a bit here so we can hear it We don't want to fucking die. I think that's fair. Like, <laughs> you think it's, it's fair? Well, okay. I would be like, you know what? I don't want to die either. We have that in common. You guys don't know about the video? Oh, God, stop with the video. Enough with the video. Trying to fucking give people nightmares. It gave me nightmares. And someone came to my Halloween party dressed as that dude, and I almost didn't let him in. I was like, no, fuck you, go home. Okay, so we have, uh, we, and we constantly have fights about this in America. We have a, a number of agencies like the FDA, the EPA, a couple others that are supposed to look out for the ingredients of the stuff we eat and the air we breathe and all these sort of things. And for some reason, we fight them. We don't want them to do their job. We don't no. want people monitoring. And you know what? <clears throat> to those people who say, well, the government should just let the market decide because, you know, th 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 they'll correct for themselves. I, the market wants what's best for you. I'd like to direct you to China to see what happens when the market decides. Oh, boy. Chinese restaurant shut down after seasoning food with opium <gasps> to hook customers. Oh my gosh. That's brilliant. <laughs> it is though. Just sprinkle some Oxycontin on there. Keep them coming back. It's really smart marketing. I'm pretty sure Starbucks does that. Do you know, you, you realize anyone that, ter that uses the term smart marketing or genius marketing, what they're really saying is, wow, what a sociopath. Kind of. Yeah. 35 restaurants, 35 restaurants across China have been found illegally using opium as seasoning in their food. <laughs> Five restaurants are being prosecuted over the findings, while 30 more are under investigation. The eateries include a popular chain of hot pot restaurants. It's unclear how the opium came to enter the food. It, it's unclear. The, I don't know, did the opium just sort of like do like, it was like the let's all go to the lobby only with a pill yeah. bottle and just sort of jumped in the pot. Let's all go to the pot. Yeah, no, that's not, that's not how it happens. So what is poppy? powder tastes like well it tastes like well about a week later it tastes like the shakes i would expect <laughs> um oh my god and of course the first comment is her you guys are so stupid poppy seeds are op opium yes not concentrated right the quantity in concentration is a little different yeah you gotta take like you see an entire field. You gotta take all them seeds. Yeah. All them fucking seeds. Not just you like. You do like shot glasses of poppy seeds. Yeah. Like more than one. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah, just. Uh... Yes. That is pretty smart, though. Do you know? I saw something that said there's a study that has found that cheese affects the same part of the brain as addictive drugs. Which explains our whole fast food culture. Everything is smothered in cheese because they can't put poppy powder on it. They can't just lace it with heroin. So 
like covered in cheese. Oh my god, that explains Wisconsin. Oh my god, I'm Wisco I'm in Wisconsin. Give me some cheese. Holy shit! Some mystery solved there. We're like our very own Mulder and Scully. We totally are. Except without the ten year retcon. Um so Oh god, this next one. Oh god, oh god. Okay. You know, I what I'm afraid of, especially in light of the suicide did you see the Suicide Squad trailer? Yes. And I find it interesting that that's the first trailer DC has put out that uses any color whatsoever mm. and looks like it has a sense of humor. But th th what's been going on around all this is Jared Leto being edgy because he's the Joker and apparently, yeah, yeah that's become a meme now. And this whole edgy thing coming back in, you know, just doing this horrible shit in the name of, of it's edgy, so it's cool. And I'm worried about that because we did that. I'm not going to say our generation was any better. We did that. We were a bunch of fucking dumbasses. And I thought we'd started sliding away from that, but I don't like the upticks. Now, what I'm leading up to here is uh, some high school students. Um, yeah, they did a thing. They, th I, I, I guess they were trying to be edgy. They were trying to be with it. They, they put this on social media, and that was not good. Students in hot water for pick with t-shirts yeah. spelling out racial slur. These little fucking assholes. Local high school students were the talk of social media Friday after a photo of them displaying a racial slur on t-shirts was posted online. The photo shows several students from Desert Vista High School in Awataki Forming an apparent ethnic slur with letters and symbols on black t-shirts. The picture was taken the day of the annual panoramic yearbook picture for seniors. The problem is, shit like this has become okay again. Why like, is it okay? A couple reasons, I think. I'm going to get really serious on you for a minute here. One, I think the election of a black president awakened a very ugly side of America that we've all quietly ignored and or didn't know was out there. Putting a black man in the White House awakened a monster. Two, fucking Donald Trump is out there making it acceptable to hate women, foreigners, minorities... Uh, and this stuff shit like this has become kind of socially acceptable again and e even better here it's like no it's okay we didn't use g's we used asterisks so it's okay but it's not because everybody knew what you meant <clears throat> but that's the problem is we're we've we're coming sort of full circle to a place where this is okay again and it's not okay but people think it is like people are comfortable saying and doing these things again. Where the fuck are your parents? Their parents are probably worse, if not the same. That's probably where they fucking learned it from. You don't you're not fucking born a bigot. You learn it somewhere. Can we get them new parents? That would be nice. Better parents. Can we get them parents who are not assholes? That would be nice. I would, I would like to have, you know... Every child should have the chance to have parents who aren't assholes. Yes! You know? Just... But yeah, we're at this place. Where, like, I was watching this video online of Fox News did a focus group of why Americans are so angry. And they had this panel of all white people. <laughs> and they were like, well, you can't speak your mind anymore without being called a racist or something. And it's like, well, if what's on your mind is racist, then no, you can't. Yeah. And actually said, it's ridiculous anymore. You can't you can't just call a spade a spade. And I was like, I, I don't I, I don't even think that was intentional is the sad part. 
But it was all these people basically complaining that it's no longer okay to say horrible racist shit and that makes them angry. And the problem is it's increasingly accept like they think it's okay to be angry about that. The, the, and this shit, this isn't edgy. This isn't cool. This has been around for like forever. So at best it's retro. You know what? Retro hey, is bullshit. Not fucking new. Yeah, retro is bullshit. Especially this. You certainly have not stumbled on anything new and, with her fucking racism. Oh, the pose in that picture where they're just sort of like hands on hips and arms around each other's shoulders. They look so like, fucking pleased with themselves, don't they? We're the best of friends. Also, fuck black people. What the hell? With Jesus, kids. My God. But it's okay because one of them totally has a black friend. Uh, post-racial it's, America, everybody. But this is the fucking problem with white people, man. Like, we think we can just say we're kidding and that makes it okay. It doesn't. Yeah. And then we think we get to cry about our rights being infringed upon because we don't get to be assholes. No, you have you technically have the right to be an asshole, but then everybody else has the right to call you a fucking asshole. Yeah, that's it's 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 not a one way. It's not like I can that's, say that's yeah. how that works. You can be like, hey, look at me. I'm an asshole. Racial slur, racial slur. And then we can all be like, wow, you're a fucking asshole. And that's the pretty much the level of discourse in this country now. <sighs> well, moving along, let's let's go to one that should not have been a repeat story. This should, I swear to God, I had to double check three times to make sure this Most was not. Most of our repeat stories should not be repeat stories. I had to double check and make sure this did not happen the fuck again. It did, it did, it, 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 mm, mm, I do. <sighs> okay. From Laverne, La, if you're having deja vu, no, no, really, this shit happened twice, at least. Laverne, Tennessee. Metro Tudor arrested after putting three kids in her trunk. What? Three-year-old reading teacher was arrested after three children were allegedly found inside her vehicle's trunk. And Why? It, officials claim that Adria J Andrea 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 Andrea. Okay, I can say words. Andrea James was charged with three counts of reckless endangerment. According to police, three small children, ages 9 and 10, were found in her truck while six other kids were in the cab area of her car. They were in the car and had seat belts and were not transported in the trunk. Only six were in the car. Um, apparently... And very few cars have six seat belts, let alone nine. She was taking them on a school trip and did not want to hire a school bus. Too fucking bad. So that's that's nine children. Are teachers even allowed to drive school kids around? Well, she's a tutor. I guess if you have the parents' permission, but I'm pretty sure no parent gave you permission to put their kid in the fucking trunk. Yeah, it's it's not like, hey, we're going to we're going to get some Denny's. And if but, you read on, she totally is blaming the racism. She says she knows exactly who called the police. James said she took some of the kids inside to get snacks and pizza and saw them. A Caucasian couple, and they were very irritated because it took us too long to order. All right, here's the thing. There are a lot of, there's a lot of shit white people suck at. There's a lot of terrible shit white people do. If white people reported you for having kids in your trunk... That's not the racism. No, that's not the racism. That's, that's you put kids in the trunk. Right, that's the you sucking. Yeah. Kids don't go in the trunk. No. Never. Ever. Like, Under any circumstance. day when we showed up at my sister's, we opened the trunk and my nephew did immediately leap in. But did you, did you like say, okay, goodbye, close the lid and go somewhere? We did close it for a second, but then we let him out. He's going to be an interesting guy when he grows up. He is. It's going to be an interesting guy. 
You're going to start getting bills in the mail later on from your sister. you would be like, what's this? His therapy costs. It's not going to be me. It's, I'm the one keeping him out of therapy. And I have told my sister that. I'm like, I'm the only thing keeping you from raising a little serial killer. Keep so, telling yourself that. Because they're like super type AAA. And I'm like, I'm the only thing keeping that kid from being Norman Bates. Like, I am the little bit of chaos that's keeping that kid sane. But this this is the... It's odd for me. <laughs> Your science oven is taking all the nutrients out of our food. Thank God for me. Do you remember a few months back we had the same fucking story? No, did we? We had another story where a teacher put some kids in the trunk to drive them someplace. I, I think a, I would have remembered that. No, this is the second time this has happened. Completely. I had to double check and make sure this was a different story. It's a different story. Wow. You guys, I did not like lock my... We closed the trunk for literally like three seconds and then immediately popped it back open. Uh, he wasn't going to die in there. I love my nephew. Yeah, no... This has really happened more than once with different people? Yes. It wasn't the same person that did it more than once. You can't even remember. It was a couple months ago. We had, to, yeah, it was two different people, two different places. Clearly had, blocked it out. Yeah, see, people in the channel, there were teens in laps and two in the trunk that time. So this is even worse because that time was teenagers. This is like kids, little kids. And here's... Here's, here's bringing this to its most extreme and horrible conclusion. Now, God forbid, one of those fucking kids gets kidnapped and thrown in the trunk. They're, they're, they're not going to be quite as horrified as they should be. They'll be like, oh, we're going to Denny's? Okay, I'm, do I'm down with this. We used to do this all the time. I know the drill. You don't, want ki you don't want kids to find being in the trunk of the car normal. No, that's not something we need to normalize in our society. No. Oh, boy. All right. This this next one. The one, last story for tonight. Haven't done this in a while. <clears throat> okay, gentlemen. <laughs> Take your right leg, cross it over your left. Tightly. We did it last week because you did the dick switch. Well, yeah, but that was that was a that was a potential. Or you can put valves on your testes. That was a potential. That was a maybe. That was a possible. That was a projection. That was an idea. This is the reality. I dare you to think of something worse to do to yourself when bored. Man stuck screw up his genitals. Huh. <laughs> I love that response. Huh. Okay. <clears throat> Larksville. And of course, Travis Keller of the, the, the Times leader, Larksville. Shame on you. Travis Keller wrote this story. The first line of the story. Talk about getting screwed. You're bad and you should feel bad. Travis, this is for you. All of this, <laughs> this whole area, this, this is all because of you. That's why you're writing dick screw stories and not writing for Weekend Update on SNL. A man who officials say was intoxicated is being treated after pulling a nail in a cringeworthy, after putting a nail in a cringeworthy place in his body. A screw or a nail? I don't know. Badly There's written. There's a difference. An officer responded and learned that a 50... It's worse because it's fucking... What do you... Who's it? Textured. Officer responded after learning the 50-year-old male who was allegedly intoxicated stuck a two to three inch screw up his genitalia and was unable to urinate. This reporter needs to figure out if it was a nail or a screw because that's a difference and details matter. Although this is not unprecedented. This is a fetish. You can buy education time. You can buy like little metal rods that are intended to be inserted in the urethra for the purpose of 
denying urination and ejaculation for jollies. This, that's a thing that people do. This is. But those that's are. That's people do. Generally, though, <laughs> you don't use sharp things or obviously unsanitary things or things with spirals carved into them. You use nice, smooth, sanitized things with a rounded edge with lube. Two to three inch screw. That's that's this that's about that big. That's yeah. that's that is that's maybe it's, it's, it's about that big. Yeah. That's. Eh. Oh, apparently it's called sounding. I didn't know that. Thank you. Apparently the yeah, that's a thing that people do. I don't need to know if that has a name. It doesn't need a name. It has a name. I didn't know what the well, name was. It doesn't need a name. That's a fetish. I just so but there's there's safer ways to do your fetish. When I have been drunk, I have done a lot of stupid shit, but never have I been sitting around the house looking at a box of hardware going, "Hey, I got an idea." Well, didn't we do the story about the guys in jail that were putting dice under their foreskin for like Do you love that fucking story? I do because that intrigues me. It wasn't even, it was like under the skin skin. Like they had to stretch and I didn't know the penis could do that. Well, this is different. Yeah. Could you imagine the poor- So he couldn't urinate. Did it get stuck up there? Can you imagine the poor bastards in the emergency room? It's like- Oh, have you had a tetanus shot recently? Um, do we have a- Four. We're going to give you four tetanus shots. Do, do we have a Phillips head or a flat head? I don't know. No, so, my, my name is Jim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, have mercy. Yeah, use the proper <sighs> tool for the job. I know quality sex toys are expensive, but it is worth it to use the proper tool for the job. Don't just jam anything up there. You give yourself an infection. I guess that's the first thing we learned this week. Don't just jam anything up your pee hole. God damn right. <laughs> the yeah, what did we learn this that's week? That's the kind of thing you don't have to tell people, but clearly that is not the case. You would like to think. You would like to think you wouldn't have to say the words don't just jam random objects up your pee hole, but you do. It's so cute how they still think the safe word does anything. It does nothing. The safe word does nothing. It does nothing. There is no stopping me. We've learned that kids do not ride in the trunk. No. If you if you do not have enough room for all the kids in the car, make two trips. Get another car. Get another car. Get a bigger car. Don't put it in that fucking trunk. Rent the fucking bus like you're supposed to. We have learned that just because you can't say naughty things does not mean you're being rebellious. Right. It just means you're being an asshole. Huge. You were a goatsy asshole. You were like, oh, you know, the, the, yeah, it's no. We've learned that when you let the market decide, the market decides you want drugs. I mean, the market's not wrong. <laughs> but the market does not have your best interests at heart. I think it's important to remember that. Yes. The market doesn't give a fuck about you. We've learned when you're trying to calm people on a delayed flight... Do not invoke the Grim Reaper. No. He doesn't instill confidence. I mean, shit. I, at that point, I would have just gone whole hog and started and put on, like, Don't Fear the Reaper. Some Blue Oyster Cult. Just a hint, kids. Um, and finally, we've learned if someone gets rid of the snow dick that you have lovingly crafted... Then by go, God, go bigger, 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 harder, <laughs> longer, faster. Yes. 
<laughs> Make a snow dick so big that even God himself has to go. Is that a penis? 